Hello everyone, Fuzz here, and here we are, standing at the bottom of the steps of the game's final story dungeon. So it's been a fun journey up until this point. We've had uh, lots of ups, lots and downs, and now we're actually here to start working our way towards Ultima Sia herself, the vile sorceress from the future, who's only done bad stuff to us up until this point, although we haven't actually seen her ourselves. So we're going to go and head in and see what treasures this castle holds for us. As I mentioned at the end of the previous episode, it's a little bit different because all our abilities are going to be locked. By abilities I mean command abilities, make sure you're junctioned uh, correctly. The following will work. Your standard stats as you junction magic to them, as well as your abilities down here, okay? So all that's going to be locked are the command abilities, that's this section up here. But we are going to be unlocking them one by one. And I'm going to tell you the best order in which to do that, assuming you've been following this walkthrough from the beginning. You might already have Eden at this point, which is the final Guardian Force. I don't, because I think the best place to draw him is from this dungeon. If you do have Eden, then this path probably isn't going to make a whole lot of sense to you that we're going to take. But this is assuming, as I say, you followed the walkthrough. So without any further ado, guys, let's make our way in. And as always, if you enjoy this episode, please don't forget to hit the like button and uh, give me a comment as well. Let me know what you guys think if you're playing along also. So here we are, ready to take on the final dungeon. I would recommend that you have encounter none equipped as you traverse this dungeon due to the random enemy encounters. Which, by the way, can encompass pretty much most of the enemies you've discovered throughout the game already up to this point. And they can have their levels randomised as well. So there could be easy encounters or difficult encounters. Either way, Encounter None will eliminate that problem. So we have our first boss fight coming up here on these stairs. What I do recommend for this one, because you only have the attack command available, is just get your strength stat as high as possible. So throw on your highest magic and your strongest abilities. So obviously strength plus 60% is always a good one to use. And just get your character's as strong as possible on strength and so long as you have a high strength stat then this boss will fall quite easily and killing each boss in this dungeon will unlock a new ability that we get to select from as in you know one of the ones that are locked not a new ability that we haven't seen before of course so this is a two phase fight there's not really any tactic to it since we only have the attack command available if you want to be careful you can throw sleep onto your status defense Otherwise, just hit it, basically. It has 20,000 health, and that's split across two phases of 10,000 health per phase. After this first phase here, it will change its form. And then it's just the same thing again, really. Auto haste helps. Since, as you can see, you basically are able to get all your attacks in before the boss even has a chance to do anything. Use this fight as a kind of gauge as to whether or not you're ready for this dungeon. If you struggle here, you're probably better off leaving and boosting up your characters by getting some stronger magics and whatnot. And now we have a choice to make. A glitchy choice by the looks of things. Uh, we need to select which ability we want to unlock. Now I'm going to unlock the draw command. And even though this doesn't actually boost our power and we'll still be stuck with just attack for the time being. It's really important to get this because there's a guardian force in the way of Eden that we're going to be able to draw from a boss that's coming up. And you can get Eden by other means. But I do strongly recommend that you get it now. And also, if you've missed any of the other Guardian forces up until this point, especially Siren, who you may have missed when we fought the boss on the communication tower near the start of the game, then you also get the opportunity to draw those Guardian forces again. So, all in all, I do recommend the draw command. And that's pretty much how this dungeon is going to work. Once we've uh, fought that fight, you might want to head back and save, and then we're going to proceed 
down. Uh, a slightly different path than you may be used to if you've played this game before. But this is the path I'm going to take that will allow us to draw the strongest Guardian Force, which is Edom. Uh, before we actually continue on with the normal route that we would take. This is how we head to get Eden then. So this is where the boss was we just fought and it was blocking this door. So we can actually head through that door now. And we can see there's a chandelier here which we can actually step on. And then it will fall. Not particularly pleasant, but there you go. Remember, this is a two-party dungeon, so you can switch to the other party at any time by using these green glowing orbs. Although at this point, there's really no need to, so I wouldn't concern yourself too much with that. Although later on, it will be important. And now somewhere around here, there's an item we can grab. There we go, the treasure vault key. So I do recommend that you grab that. Since that will make life easier a little bit later on. And I'll just kind of what this draw point is actually. Slow. So it's there if you need it I guess. Just keep heading north. Another draw point for your drawing pleasure. And there's another key around here. Just have to make sure that I'm in exactly the right location. Okay, it's on the bridge. Make sure you do walk at this point, by the way. I believe if you run, all manner of bad stuff can happen. There we go. And now we're just going to run up here. It's quite a large dungeon this is, by the way, if you haven't noticed already. And we're just going to keep heading up here. We've got a nice boss fight coming up, so... This dungeon just wants to wear out our party, I think, before we actually engage in it. It knows how strong we are. And as we keep going up, we can see that there's a pendulum device that's swinging all over the place and before we engage with this pendulum it's very important that you basically have um, prepared for the upcoming battle which is going to be a tough battle especially because of our locked abilities so what I recommend is that you absolutely unequivocally guard against fire attacks now the boss has a nasty fire attack which um, completely ignores your spirit stat, so you basically have to rely on elemental defense. Make sure you do so, okay? And then we just need to engage with this pendulum. Which will take us to the other side here. And all I can say now is good luck. We'll just get rid of encounter none for the time being. And as we can see, there's another friendly looking fella here, a Bahamut type enemy. This is Bahamut's big brother, known as Tiamat. And Tiamat is not normally fought as the second boss in this dungeon, but I want to do so, mainly because he holds the uh, Guardian Force we want to draw. Which is Edom. And you actually get an achievement for, a, uh, for drawing Eden if you haven't had him already. 
And he does have quite a lot of health. And there's not a whole lot we can do here. Apart from attack. So that's exactly what we are going to do. And it's very important that you have a high speed stat and uh, auto haste if possible so that we can beat him before he beats us. This basically is a race, this fight. Tiamat has a naturally high vitality stat, which is why your attacks will only do 50% of their normal damage on average. As you can see, his spell name is Spelling Out. And if he does cast it, then it's basically a stronger version of Mega Flare, which is a fire based attack. And if you're not guarding against fire, it's going to one shot your team, even if you have uh, maximum health. But look, if you have a high speed stat and auto haste, and you set up correctly, then that guy doesn't even get to attack. Bless him. And we get to name our brand new Guardian Force. Eden. And we get to select another ability, another command ability to unlock. And at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and unlock the magic ability. And now it's basically a case of running uh, all the way back down towards the entrance so that we can continue to uh, make our way through the standard progression of this dungeon. Right, so when we're back in the room with the chandelier that dropped us down, uh, you can head back to save if you want by using the green glow here, switching to your other party, and then when you leave the castle, you'll automatically take control of Squall again, so you can use the save point and then just make your way back here. A little word about Eden before we move on. He's probably one of, well, he is the strongest guardian force in the game. So as far as abilities go, start by learning the GF Able uh, Medicine Refinement ability uh, from him and then basically after that you're going to want to quickly learn boost because not only are his abilities great but his attack in battle is simply awesome when Eden's fully powered up not only does he automatically have the break damage limit but when you throw in with summon magics up to plus 30 percent and boost his level and then max out his boost in battle he can do well over 60,000 points of damage to every enemy very very nice if you ask me but in terms of abilities, learn obviously this one first, then boost, and then just go for all his other command abilities, followed by whatever else, whatever else it is that you want to learn. And in terms of who gets Eden, that will be your defensive character. So in my case, that's Zell. Okay, so it's whoever has Brothers, Carbuncle, Leviathan, Doom Train, uh, and Tombray. Give them Eden as well. And that will give them spade, spade, speed, evade, and hit stats to work with also, which is very nice. Right, so, from here, you want to basically interact with this hatch on the floor. We're going to click yes to that. Make sure you protect now against lightning. And one of your characters should have the auto protect status. And here's the next friendly encounter. Which I'm just trying to interact with here. Now the most important thing that may be of importance to you in this fight is that if you don't have Siren at this point because you missed it at the communications tower then make sure you draw Siren now. This will be your final opportunity to do so. But in all honesty, this guy shouldn't be too much of a challenge. He does like to throw some nasty lightning attacks out at you. But as long as you're protecting against lightning then this fight will go down without too much of a hitch I would imagine.
if you are struggling with its lightning ability for whatever reason, then basically just make sure you hit it with fire or ice attacks, and it won't counter that with Mega Spark. But this guy at most only has 22,000 health, so once again, if you have uh, boosted up your strength stat, then your physical attack should take it out without too much uh, of an issue. Now, assuming that you've been following my walkthrough up until this point, you should have the draw and magic commands available. If for whatever reason you only have draw at this point, then make sure you unlock magic here. Otherwise, we're going to go for the item command. And now we're going to make our way back up again. And head through this door here. <coughs> and this will take us back to the entrance as well. So we can say hello to our other friends. Hello... But of course, we've done another boss, and since we have the save points available, we're going to go and use it first of all. This time, from the hallway, we're going to head over to the right-hand side, where there's another door with all new unexplored areas for us to go and visit. And it's quite a linear path. So we're just going to head down the stairs here. And into this next room, which is a kind of art gallery type place. As in, there's a gallery here with lots of art on the wall. And we can see that there's a picture here. Quite a large picture. And it just says the title is too faint to read. This is actually a puzzle that we need to solve. So, if you want to go ahead and try and solve this puzzle, then pause the video here. And then play again if you get stuck. It doesn't matter if you mess up. Uh, it, it doesn't, like, you know, penalise you or anything. You just need to get it right before you move on. But now here is the solution. So we need to examine a few of these other pictures on the walls around here first. We need to find the ones that say Vividarium, Intervigilum and Viator. So none of these yet. Just check the one that's against the side here. It's possible that these are random, I'm honestly not too sure. Okay, so that's the first one that we need, into Virgilium. And so now we need to find Viator and Vividarium. Okay, so there's Vividarium. If at any point you're not sure which ones of those three that you've collected, then you can just head back down to the main picture. And it will show you which ones that you've got. So we need Vividarium, which is there. Into Virgilidium, whatever it's called. Uh, which is the third from the bottom, which is there. And Viator, which we don't yet have. The others, we don't need at all. So I'll just choose any three here for the time being. So we're just looking for Viviator or something. I can't pronounce these words. Viator. There it is. I don't think these are random actually, so... It should just be the same ones that I've explored. Well, they correct me in the comments if I am wrong about that. So once you've got those three showing up here, you need to select them in the following order. You need to go to Vividarium, first of all. And then it's Inter... Inter Vigilium. Finally, Viator. 
and that will solve the puzzle for you. And that will make a darkness appear. Along with a boss spawn. Lovely. For this fight, make sure you have wind attached to your elemental attack. So that's aero magic or tornado magic. And pretty much, you're going to have to face a boss that has very high defences. But with wind attached... It shouldn't be too much of a problem, I wouldn't have thought. And it doesn't have a whole lot of health anyway. First thing to note is that if you don't have Leviathan, make sure you draw it, because this will be the final boss you can do so from. That little lad that you see to the side is something that the boss can draw heals from. Which is fine. It's not a huge amount of healing. If you kill his little lads, then he can cast his powerful attack, which is... Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, actually. But we can avoid it by keeping these guys alive. I think it's called Mega Pulse Cannon. So at max level, this guy will have 34,000 health. Some of his attacks are quite slow in their animation, so that can drag the battle out a little bit longer than we would otherwise like. That's a nice attack there by Selfie. Looks like he's drained all the life out of that first little fella. Poor thing. We need to avenge his death. And down he goes. You get the elemental attack, guaranteed as a reward for that fight. And the ability to unlock another command. Now, if you don't have the item ability unlocked at this point make sure you select that now but we're going to go for the limit break we need to head through the north door here to proceed but i'm going to call things uh, quits here today folks so that i can go and get some rest i think and we've still got quite a few more battles ahead of us so it'd be a good opportunity a good opportunity here just to take a break i think so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. I hope this episode has been helpful to you. If it has, just let me know. And I'll see you soon, guys, as we carry on with more Final Fantasy VIII. Thanks for joining me today. Goodbye.